Alrighty, we're back everybody. Alright, so this is going to be our last video on this Gearbox project. We've got all of the hard work done. Um, now we're just going to go download the proper fasteners and we're going to uh, put them in our assembly. So, uh, real quick, one quick housekeeping thing before we do that. Um, the inventor files, if we go to open here, well, you'll notice all the inventor files have a little icon, right? Or a little thumbnail, I should say. Uh, that shows a preview of what the part is. But the the step files don't, right? Just a blank thing. So, so you have to look at the file name to determine what the step file is. Uh, so w you get a whole bunch of step files in a folder. It's hard to tell which one you want. Um, so we're going to download, I don't remember how many different fasteners there are, but there's like five or six maybe. So that we're going to add a whole bunch more step files to this folder. We want to get rid of these. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to go to my file browser here and uh, sort by type and I'm just going to select the step files. Now step files are easy to download so I have no problem just deleting these. You could create, uh, I typically create an archived folder if I've got files I'm not using but I want to create. I just create a folder in here that, that's with the name archived. I throw stuff in there that's old, but I don't want to delete it. But in this case, we're just going to blow these away. Just hit the delete key and, and get rid of those files. I'm going to go back to sorting by name because it drives me crazy if we don't. Okay. Um, back to Inventor. Okay, so we need to figure out what fasteners we need. So we need fasteners. We need screws to go. We need 1032 screws to go in um, uh, these standoffs here. We need screws and washers to go in the end of this shaft. We need screw a screw and a washer to go in the end of this shaft, which is a different size than this one. So these are these are quarter inch. These are tens. Uh, and then we need let's see. We need we need the screws to hold the motor in. Okay. Now let's talk about let's talk about these screws and the standoff screws for a second. So these are 1032, and these are 1032. So you say, well, we could use the same ones, right? Well, I I think in this application we could actually get away with it. All right. So let's let's talk about let's talk about length of screws for a second. So the, so the same thread pitch, but let's let's talk about length. So we're going to use button heads for this. You, you could use socket heads. Um, button heads are socket heads are a little stronger in terms of the, the, the hex drive in the screw is a little less likely to strip out, which which is an issue with button heads. But button heads are lower profile; they don't stick out as far, and they just look nicer. So I think maybe on a real robot we'd probably use socket heads just because we have a lot more socket heads laying around. But um, for the purpose of this, we're just going to use button heads because it'll look nicer. Um, and then for holding shafts in, you're not going to torque these screws down a whole bunch. So I, I pretty much always use button heads on the end of the shafts, just if I, if I have a choice. So um, that's that's pretty common practice. Most teams do that too. Um, okay, so so these are 1032s. These are 1032s. They're going to be both button heads, but they might be different lengths. So let's let's talk about that for a second. So um, this is a quarter inch wide. So we're, the the fastener is going to need to be at least a quarter inch long, and then we need some amount of threads in the part. Uh, so the rule of thumb, I was told, I haven't done a lot of research or anything to check this, but I was told you need, you don't really need more than three full threads of engagement to get the full strength of the screw. I'm not going to go into exactly why that is. Um, it has to do with the tensile strength of the bolt and such, but. But but basically, you, you don't need a lot of thread engagement. Right? You don't need an inch. You don't even need half an inch of thread engagement. Um, what I do, just just personally, and and on the robotics team, we've we've kind of done the same thing. Uh, for 1032, I, I want a quarter of quarter inch of engagement, roughly, right? Roughly a quarter of inch of engagement. So, if I need a quarter inch of length here, and I need a quarter inch of length in the standoff, okay? The quarter inch in length in the standoff. The end of the screw is tapered a little bit, so you don't have full threads at the end of the screw. You also aren't going to have full threads right at the beginning of the standoff because that the, the beginning of that hole is going to be chamfered when we deburr it. Um, so, so but with a quarter inch, you you definitely get three three full threads for sure, um, and then and then obviously quarter inch here. So that's a half inch overall. That's that's what we should shoot for. So I think we want a half inch fastener here. So could we use the same fastener down here on this shaft? Well, if you remember, 
the depth of these threads, Inventor was telling us we couldn't go deeper than 0.536 inches. So 536 is a little bit more than a half an inch, but I have a couple concerns about that. First of all, um, that's only if you run the tap all the way down, okay? And you know, it, it, with somebody somebody running the tap, making this part, might not get the tap quite all the way down. They might they might not they might have one more turn or something, right? So they might not get it threaded all the way in there. Also, the end of the tap is tapered, so the last couple of those threads might it might not be fully formed threads. So you might not be able to get a screw in there. Like I said, it's so close. I think we could use a half inch fastener in this hole. And, and and be okay. Um, I would feel more comfortable going for a little bit of a shorter fastener. I think we'll go to a three eighths fastener here just to be sure that we don't bottom out the threads. It, it's it's a good practice not to use longer fasteners than you have to. And and if you really want to convince yourself of that, just tell yourself it weighs less, which it does. It's just not particularly significant. Okay, so we need half inch ten th half inch long ten thirty two button heads up here, three eighths long ten thirty two button heads down here. And, and on the other side, and 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 uh, uh, a number ten washer. Uh, and we just need to make sure we need to check that the the diameter of the washer is larger than three eighths of an inch, because um, we need it to to extend. Right? It doesn't have to be huge. It just needs to barely be beyond the hex, right? Okay. So then down here, um, you know, these threads can be three quarters of an inch long. Um, we're going to use a half inch screw here. Uh, the only reason we're going to use a half inch screw is because um, we have a lot of them laying around. So like in, during an actual season, we would try to use fasteners we have. There's plenty of threads there for a half inch long, so we'd use a half inch. Really, you only need you know, a 3 8 plank screw or something to, for, for this hole, but um, uh, that's what we have, and there's enough threads for it, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then, and then uh, so we'll need the half inch long uh, button head. This is a quarter 20, and then we'll need a, a, a washer for a quarter inch fastener there as well. Uh, and then this motor here, um, I'm actually going to go to Vex's website real quick and just check. I, I've been operating under the assumption that this is a, a an M4 screw in that motor. I'm going to check that. So go to Motors and Electronics, go to 775 Pro. If we go down to Drawing, and it gives us a print. And yeah, it says right here, points to the hole, says 2X M4. Okay, so we want a... We want an M4 screw. Actually, I'm going to go back to that drawing real quick. So it says it says the threads run eight millimeters deep. Okay, in um, in that motor. So we're going to have we have we have eight eight millimeters of threads to work with in the motor. We don't need anywhere near eight millimeters of threads, right? Eight millimeters is is about five sixteenths of an inch. Um, so it's it's even more threads than they're in this plate, so uh, we don't need we don't need that much threads. Um, we just need you know maybe half of that if if that. Uh, but we do. But the screw does need to be able to go through this plate. So this plate's a quarter inch. We can just call that six millimeters. Six millimeters is is close to a quarter inch. I think six millimeters is point two three six inches. I think. Um, so so six millimeters here, and then we've got eight millimeters to work with. I think we probably only need half of that. So we need maybe four millimeters inside the motor. Um, so six plus eight is ten. That's a great. That's great. That's a r nice round number. You know, you you want to round it to a size you can get. You know, we probably couldn't buy a nine millimeter screw or an eleven millimeter screw, right? Just just based on a lot of metric sizes, they they go in even numbered millimeter increments of length. So it's going to be an M4 screw. M4 is is the diameter. It's four millimeters in diameter. That's why. What M4 means, and then um, metric typically metric has kind of standardized a little bit better than the English sizes have. As with a lot of things in the metric system, it just kind of makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so um, M4, you know, with with like a 1032 screw, right? The number 10 is the diameter, and then 32 is 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 how many threads per inch, right? In metric, you typically don't need to specify what the thread pitch are because they don't have multiple thread pitches per for um, for each screw size, like you do in English sizes. Um, 
there are some exceptions to that. There are some different thread pitches for some metric sizes, but uh, as far as I know, M4 is not one of them. So, so it'll just be an M4. We don't need to know the thread pitch because there's really only one, and then it'll be 10 millimeters long. So we've got to have uh, screws for this, screw and washer. That's three different types. We need two down here, a washer and a screw down here. That's five, and, and then uh, a screw up here, so six. Six fasteners total. So let's let's go download this. I think that's what I said earlier. All right, so we're going to go to Chrome. McMaster Car. McMaster Car is where it's at, right? Uh, McMaster Car has all kinds of different fasteners. They have all kinds of products. They have CAD models for a lot of their stuff. I go here for, for CAD models for a lot of things, um, a lot of our robotics team and a lot of robotics teams buy parts from here. So um, it's a great website. Um, it's really user friendly. So uh, I can just type in the search bar. The search feature in this website is fantastic. So I can just type in the search bar. Um, button, head, cap, screw, and press it. Oops. I accidentally clicked outside of the box. Button, head, cap, screws. It shows up right there. Once it loads. There we go. Okay. So alloy steel button head hex drive screws, right? That's what we want. So we're going to click on that. Um, it's going to be, uh, we're going to do English sizes. We'll, we'll do metric later. Okay. So over here on the side, we can find our thread size. It's going to be 1032 and we wanted half an inch long. The, the length is measured from under the head, which is exactly what we want. So that's going to be half an inch. We've got two types. We've got black oxide and zinc plated. Zinc plated is more corrosion resistant, which we don't care about because the robot's only going to be running for a few weeks, and then we could care less if the screws rust or not. Um, plus, it's always going to be inside, so it's not going to get wet. So uh, under the black oxide, uh, we can click on the part number here, and it expands this little box and goes to product detail. It's got this little CAD symbol, which means if we go to the product detail page, there will be CAD available. So we go to the product detail. Okay, so it's got this little drawing, gives you some of the dimensions, tells you how high the head is, tells you how long it is, tells you what the thread is, diameter, et cetera, et cetera. Tell, even tells you what size Allen wrench you would need to drive it. Okay, so over here, there's this little drop down list. You can pick the different type. Um, by default, it's on 3D step files, which is what we've been using. You could also, um, you could also do some some other other times like uh, an IGES file is is a uh, is a uh, similar to a step. Um, you know you could you could do it in a native SolidWorks file if you wanted to if you're using SolidWorks. But um, we want 3D step file. We're gonna click save, okay, and it's gonna download it. All right, so let's go back. Now we also wanted we wanted a different length of these for the 3 8 hex shaft, right? So that's that's for these for the standoff screws. Um, so let's click on show, click on 3 8 and let's let's deselect half inch here because we don't care about it anymore. So we got 3 8 so it's a 1032 button head screw, 3 8 long. Uh, click on the part number, go to product detail, 3D step, save that. Okay, we're going to go back. Um, yes. All right, um, I'm going to do something here real quick. Uh, Vex names their their step files pretty descriptively. McMaster Car does not. Um, it just gives you the part number. If you see where I'm hovering over here with my mouse, it gives you the part number, and then it just tells you what it is. It tells you it's a button head screw, right? But it doesn't tell us what size. So I'm going to show this in the folder. This is the one we just downloaded. So this is... I'm gonna I'm gonna add something in here. It's gonna be BHCS um, point. I don't know. Ten thirty. Did I do that right? I made a typo. Ten thirty-two by point three seventy-five. And I'm gonna get rid of all this because I don't care. So I'm gonna rename these, and then this one I'm gonna name uh, BHCS, which is for button head cap screw. This is gonna be ten thirty-two. 5.500, which is half an inch. Delete all the extra. Okay, leave those in that folder. I'm gonna leave this browser window open. Okay, so now we need a button head that's a half an inch long, not three eighths. Turn off three eighths by clicking it again. 
and we want a quarter 20. Click on that and deselect 1032 just for clarity. Click on the part number for the black oxide ones. Click on product detail. Save the step file. Okay, we just download that one. I'm going to go back to my downloads folder. I'm going to rename this. It's going to be BHCS. Um, I can't do one slash four, so I'm going to quarter 20. This is not normally how you'd write it. You'd write it one slash four, right? Quarter. But I can't do that in the file name because I can't have slashes. So if I half an inch long, oh, not a parenthesis. Okay. Delete that. Okay. All right, so that's that. So that's our that's our three screws. So now we need um, we need these screws for the motor, and then two types of washers. So uh, for the motor, there's there's not really a restriction on space because they're inside the gearbox and they won't interfere with the gears. So we're going to use socket heads because they're a little bit uh, easier to install. So we're going to go back to Master Car. We're going to go up here and search socket head cap screws. Shows up. Socket head screws. Uh, there's some other types of socket head screws, but the one up in the top left-hand corner is typically the, the kind of like most basic option. Alloy steel, that's what we want. They're really strong. Wait for it to load. I don't know why this website's so slow today. Okay, uh, it's going to be... For metric sizes is usually somewhere. Oh, right, I forgot. Okay, got to go back. Uh, it's this one here. Sorry, it's not alloy steel. It's metric alloy steel um, to give me metric sizes. So it's going to be an M4. And we said 10 millimeters long. And then you can see here, there's a bunch of different finishes. Right, There's black oxide, there's zinc plated, blue dyed, zinc flake. I mean, there's just all kinds of options. Black oxide is what we want, just the normal. That's the cheapest option, and, and it works for what we're doing. So click on it. Click on product detail. 3D step, save, um, go to it in our downloads folder. We'll call it SHCS for socket head cap screw as opposed to a button head cap screw. That's going to be uh, M4 by 10 is how you usually write it for metric screws, M4 by 10. And then delete all the descriptive stuff. So we've got, basically we've got description of what it is and then we've got the McMaster car part number if we if we need that for some reason. I, I typically leave the McMaster car part number in the file name because it, it helps. Because if, if you need to go back and find that part to order it or something, it, it's nice to have a record of in the CAD model what the part number is. Um, I don't always do that with VEX files. Um, that's kind of a bad habit that I've just gotten into of just deleting them. But but it's a good idea to leave the part number in, in like VEX files or Animark files too. Um, but McMaster car has so many parts, it, it makes a lot of sense to do it for those. All right, that's four. We need two wa two different kinds of washers, and then we can start constraining or importing and then constraining. So we're just gonna search washers, washers, normal washers, like just normal washers. There's a lot of different kinds of washers. Then it's gonna be a general purpose washer. Um, four screw size number ten, and let's look here. So uh, stainless steel washers typically are, are cheapest, so that not 316 stainless, but 18.8 stainless. Um, if you remember correctly, is an equivalent of 304, but that's not important. Um, number 10, and you can see it, this is a little table, right? It, says, it tells you what the ID, what the inside diameter is. The OD is the outside diameter. It tells you what the thickness is. Gets you gives you all kinds of information. So the 18.8 is the cheapest. We don't really care about any other finishes or paying for exp expensive stainless steel. Um, so OD is 0 .3, 0 .438, okay, which is a, a not a lot larger than 3 8 but it's significantly it's significantly enough larger that it will perform its function of holding that 3 8 hex shaft in. So that's the one we want. That's perfect. Download product detail. Now this is easy enough. You could just go to this page, look at the dimensions, and then model it yourself if you want to. And and that's I I definitely do that sometimes. For the purpose here, I think it's probably faster if we just download, we just download the model. Um, let's call this washer uh, ten, right? For 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 number ten. That's all we care about. Okay, so we're gonna delete the descriptive information. Washer ten, and then we're gonna go back, 
and four screws try and show quarter inch deselect number 10 grab 18 8 stainless steel OD is is 5 8 0.65 that's bigger than a half an inch for that half an inch hex shaft so obviously it, it performs its function go to product detail now I'm going to just do that I already have the folder open okay it's going to be a washer 0 0.250 for quarter inch um, Delete description. Okay. Done with that. Oh, I didn't have it open. I want to open that again. Oh, right. It's going to give me an error now. Well, we'll do this. Okay. So I'm going to select all these parts. Hold shift. Click the bottom one. Right click. Cut. And paste them into my gearbox folder. All right, so let's run through and import these all, set the materials, and add construction, or I'm sorry, uh, add uh, work axes. And I'll show you how that works for the screws, because that's a particularly important one. Um, all right, so I'm going to open, uh, make sure all files are selected, and we can see. So we're going to grab the first one and open it. Wait for the dialog. Wait to import delete the sketch. Okay, so you'll notice a few things. This has actual threads on it. Okay, Inventor, Inventor by default doesn't do actual threads. Okay, but these models have actual threads. This is another reason why I like to use McMaster car files, just because the, the screws look really realistic. I mean, the screws are the right dimensions, proportions. Some people will just model their own screws and they're, you know, they don't look quite right because they don't get the dimensions exactly right. Um, I, I love using these models because they're really, really accurate. Um, but it does pose a problem because there's no, you know, there's there's not an easily definable cylindrical surface to constrain. So, so we use we use a work axis a work axis to make this easier to constrain. So we're gonna create the work axis and we need to find a cylindrical surface. So the the tips of the screws is actually a cylinder, um, but that's a little bit of a wonky geometry, so I don't like to use that. I like to use the rim of the head here. That's a that's a good place to click. So now we get a work axis. That's perfect. So this is going to be. Oh, this, I want to go back to my inventor material library. Go steel alloy. Okay. Now the screws are black, so I typically like to. Uh, there's a color that I like to use. It's glossy black. The screws aren't particularly glossy, right? They're they're pretty rough, so they're not glossy, but they glossy shows up better in Inventor. If you use like a flat black in Inventor, you can't see any of the edges and it makes it a pain to constrain. So I usually use glossy black because it, it, it's easier to, to see. So that's what we want. Save that and close it and open the next one. And we're just going to go through all these like this. I'm going to go through here pretty fast. Click OK. Delete the sketch. Add the work axis. Um, set the material to steel alloy. Set the material or appearance to glossy black. Give it a save. I just hit Control S on my keyboard there to save because uh, I like to use the keyboard shortcuts if I can. Um, grab the next one here. Uh, click OK. And you'll notice they they take a second to import because there's there's more geometry here. Um, than like those bearings. The, the gears also took a second to import as well. This is the other 1032. Okay, so that's that. And should be it's a little too no, this is the M4 screw. So this one it's turned the other direction for some reason. It's not important, but set the material to steel alloy. Uh, now the the head is obviously cylindrical, so when I do my work axis, I'll just click on the head, and and the work axis will be where it needs to be. And then this is also black oxide. Oops, glossy black. It's fine. Give that a save with the Control S on my keyboard. Now the two washers. Now the washers were stainless steel, so I will set the material accordingly. Obviously, I can just place the work axis anywhere I want because there's a cylinder on the inside and the outside. 
Um, and then this is going to be stainless steel, and the default stainless steel appearance is, is fine, so I'm going to save this. And last washer. So you can see, you know, there's a lot of files here. Um, it, it's fairly time consuming to put fasteners in. Now, once you've once you've downloaded it, and, and I keep a library for my, uh, you know, on this computer here, my personal computer, and, and we keep a library at Stellar Robotics of, of fasteners we use commonly so that we don't always have to go and, and re-download them every year. So we have a pretty good library of, of gears and motors and bearings and fasteners and stuff that we use a lot. So we don't, we don't spend a lot of time re-downloading parts. Um, and once you do that, putting fasteners in gets faster. But, but still, there are a lot of different parts. And if you have to go get one that you don't have in your library, it can, it can eat up a lot of time. And then as you will see, as we're about to do, we're about to put the constraints in. And to constrain all this stuff, I I there, is, I there is quite a bit of time. Um, all right, so we're going to start with the, we're gonna start with the, um, the standoff uh, fasteners, which are going to be, if we go right click and place component, it's going to be 1032 by half. Oh, I didn't put an underscore here. That's why that's out of order. Okay, I made a mis I made a mistake in my naming, but it doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so 1032 by half. Okay, now we're gonna start with the back. We'll do the four in the back, and then we'll do in the four in the front. So um, if we we need to turn the screw around, it's facing the wrong direction. So if we do Y, rotate by the Y axis twice, right? Right hand rule and all that. So we're going to put a screw there, we'll put a screw there, we'll put a screw down here and, and over here, right? We'll, we'll constrain them where they need to go. And then let's, uh, let's go ahead and place our other four down. So let's rotate Y again. We could have placed these first, but it doesn't matter. Place one there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay. Then I'm going to hit Escape. I'm going to click the Constrain tool. I'm just going to go and do all these. So I'm going to click the work axis and rotate around until I can click the inside of this hole. And the screw will line up. I'm going to do this one over here, near this one, so put in that hole, and this screw, like I said, I'm doing the back first, so I'm clicking the work axis on the inside of the hole, and um, I, I guess I, I should have mentioned before I started, I, I'm pressing enter after I do this, so, so click the work axis, click the inside of the hole, enter, right, I, I'm just doing that for, for speed, so I'm going back up here and do this one, click the inside of the hole, enter, Click the work axis, click the inside of the hole, and press enter. I think you get the picture. Okay, um, that's that. Now, there are some better ways to constrain fasteners than this. There is an insert feature. Um, the only problem I have with the insert feature is it doesn't work well with McMaster car models specifically. If, if, this, if the body of the screw was just modeled as a cylinder instead of these threads, it would be easier to use. You could still use it. Um, but I, I just don't because it's just you have to zoom way in and click like this area right here and it's just it's just not worth it in my mind. Um, if you I mean if you choose to use the insert feature, it works just as well. It's just you've got to be a little careful how you pick them. So I don't um, I just place the I have to place twice as many constraints, but it's faster for me to do it this way. It's just personal preference. But keep in mind there are more than one way there is more than one way to constrain fasteners than what I'm showing here. I just show the kind of most basic method. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mate the inside of the screw head to the outside of the gearbox plate and press enter. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all of these. Click the screw head, click the plate, press enter. Find an angle, click screw head, click the plate, press enter. I'll do all these here real quick. And you can really click anywhere on this surface that you want. Like, there's no reason you have to click close. You don't have to click right by the hole. You can click up here if you want it, and it would still work because it's selecting the whole face. All right, so that's those four. You'll notice these little little orange lines show up, which, depending on how much you care, they, that could be a little bit annoying. Um, I don't particularly care. If you do a nice render, 
right? If you go in and, and you make a nice render to try to make it look photorealistic, Inventor does not render these lines, so you don't have to worry about it for that. If you're doing production drawings, like you're making prints with dimensions and stuff for the machinists, these lines don't show up. They only show up in the model view, so they really don't hurt anything. They look a little funky, but they don't hurt anything. I believe if you go to view... Um, no, it's not here. I don't remember where it is. There's a place you can turn these off temporarily. You can turn off the visibility for them. Um, I don't remember where it is because I never do it. So uh, there is a way to turn these off, though, if you want to look at your part without having those. So um, you can also turn them off one by one in the part. Like I could open up this this screw, and I could right-click on the work axis and turn off the visibility if I wanted. But I don't want to do that because I want to use them. So. All right, uh, I'm going to give that a save with the control S, or you can click the button up here. Place part. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So let's do let's do the motor screws here. So I'm going to open this one, and I'm double clicking on on the file to open it. You can click it and then click open, or you can just double click on it. So I'm going to rotate twice by the Y axis to turn the screw around. Place one. screwed up. Yeah, okay, so this is an issue with the this is an issue with the Google Drive thing that I'm using. Uh don't worry about it. It's I'm just not gonna be able to save this for a while. So alright, I'm gonna go back and place this component again and I'm just gonna click yes to that message. So yeah. Alright, that's that's an issue. Don't worry about that. Your system if you're saving locally that won't be an issue. Um all right, I'm done with that. I'm going to escape out of that. Click Constrain. Click the work axis. And click its... Um, we've got these four holes. These are the vent holes, right? And you can kind of see if you get the right angle. They, they line up to the vents in the motor right here. Um, we want the screw holes, which is this one. you got to kind of like get a weird angle on it to, to get in there and, and be able to click on what you need. So I'm going to click on the other screw axis. Go to the other side and click on this hole. Then I'm going to click... And once again, I'm pressing enter after I do each pair of selections. It's two selections, then you're, you're done. So inside of the head, inside of the plate, enter. Okay. And, and if, you're, if you're not comfortable using the keyboard regularly, um, you can click apply. It does the same thing. Enter and apply do the same thing. Okay, so now that that's, how the screw, that's how the motor's held in there. You get this little boss that's in here, and then the, the screws hold the motor on. The... Um, the pinion is pressed on, right? So it, there's no fastener. It's just basically a really, really tight fit keeps keeps that that motor pinion on. Um, we talked about that in the in-person or the in-person class session, um, but I, I didn't mention it here in this project. Okay, so let's um, let's let's put the washers in. Then we'll put the screws on top of them because that's the order they're going to go on. So let's uh, click place. Uh, and it'll be the three, or I'm sorry, it's going to be the number 10 washers open. And we're going to rotate these by, we'll rotate it once by the x axis, um, place one here and one on the other side, and then escape. Okay, so I'm going to constrain and I'm going to pick the work axis and this work axis and connect that work axis to that work axis and enter as I've been doing. Okay, so now we're just going to constrain the back side of this washer. So I'm going to try to get a kind of an angle here on it. Back side of the washer to the end of the shaft. Same thing on the other side. Back side of the washer to the end of the shaft. You see me zooming in and out. That makes it easier to click on what I want to click on. So I don't have to like try to line the mouse up from a million miles away. I can just zoom way in real quick and, and click what I want to click. So get used to zooming in and out a lot because it makes constraining a whole lot faster. If you if you do your your orbiting, zoomed out and then zoom in and click and then zoom back out to orbit again, you don't get lost in your um, and you don't know which direction you're facing. It, it, it's easier to do it that way. Escape out of that. Okay, so now we're gonna select the screws. Okay, so for speed, if you if you right click, you can see that you've got this place component button here and you've got this um, this kind of circular pattern of buttons. This is what's called the I believe they call it the pinwheel. Um, if you hold your right mouse button, right? You hold the right mouse button and you drag and, and I've got to do it quick. Um, so if you 
if you drag, if you hold the right, if you click, I'm sorry, if you hold the mouse button and you drag in in the direction of one of these buttons without letting the mouse button go, and then let the mouse button go. So if I if I click and drag upwards, and then let go, it will automatically click the button that's that's in that direction on the pinwheel, right? So if I if I start moving my mouse up, click the click and hold the right mouse button, keep moving, then let the mouse button go. You see how it drew that little like line, and then it did the place component. So if I want to measure, right, I can do that and measure. It's just a quick flick of the mouse and it activates that tool. So that's that's how you if you want to be really fast when you're doing stuff, you use the pinwheel and you just flick the mouse, you you use the right mouse button and you flick the mouse in the direction you want to select whatever particular tool it is. And and that's um that's a really fast way to do that. So um we're doing the 3 8 10 32 for the end of the 3 8 hex shaft. I'm going to open that. Um, that's the right direction for that end. I need to turn it around, rotate twice by the y axis, and, and uh, place it down over there. And then escape out of that. And then if you. Yeah, so constraint is, is like up and to the uh, right. So you can just do a constraint by. Right, right mouse dragging with a quick flick of your mouse in the direction you want to go. So, constraint, it's that easy. Okay, so um, do the end of the screw, the work axis to this work axis again, and this work axis to that work axis, and then inside of the screw head to the end of the washer, enter side of the screw head to the top of the washer enter okay so that's done so that's that'll hold that shaft in that's that's accurate the, the these are done the motors done we just have this to do so let's go grab the um, uh, quarter inch washer right there I just used the mouse flick really fast I advise you do it uh, let's rotate this washer once again I, I like to orient the the origin in a way that makes sense you can do that if, if you want or not it's up to you and then escape out of that and go constrain the mouse flick and grab the work axis and attach it to that work axis. Then I'm going to grab the back of the washer to the end of the shaft. Enter and escape out of that. Place component. I want the quarter inch, quarter 20 by half button head. Need to turn this around so rotate Y. I'm gonna do that twice. Place it down. Hit escape. Go to constrain. Connect that work axis to that work axis, and underneath the head to the outside of the washer. Okay, so that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the finished gearbox. Um, and I still can't save. I'm actually just going to do a file save as here real quick. Um, I'll fix this issue later, but um, if I just do a save as, I can save it. It's just, there's a, basically, well, anyways, I don't, it's not important. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you won't have that issue at home um, on your systems. If you're saving to your flash drive or, or saving to your hard drive, it, it's not going to make a difference. So, uh, let Let's look at weight. So we can look at weight the same way we looked at the weight for the motor. If you remember, we went to the the eye properties. We can go to the eye properties for an assembly too. And basically, an assembly will just add up the weight of all the different components. And because we've set the proper material, we've set alloy steel for this, and aluminum for this, and aluminum for that, steel for that, aluminum 7075 for that, and all the shafts. And we've set all the proper aluminum types and and steel and whatever. And we set the actual measured weight of the motor. So it'll add up the weights of all those and tell us what it is. So if we go up here to the browser, click on the, the top, like where it says the assembly name, right click on that, go to I properties, go to physical, and click update. And it tells us this whole assembly with the fasteners and everything weighs 2.423 pounds, right? Which is going to be pretty close. Um, now, yeah, that's kind of heavy. I mean, the robot can only be 120 pounds. Um, if you wanted to take weight out of this, you know, if you look at this gear, if I open this, 
you know, you could you could drill some holes in the gear, right? A lot of teams do that. Um, if you wanted to reduce weight in these plates, you would you would cut some like crazy lightning patterns in here, which yeah, um, uh, in in the, in a later class we're actually going to learn how to do that. I'm going to show you guys how to do those. Um, a lot of teams do them. There's a there's a pretty um, standard lightning pattern that people use that, that takes out a lot of weight without removing any really any strength, and it, it looks really nice too. Um, so you can do that as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of options if you want to make it lighter, but we'll talk about that in later classes. So this is the finished product. Um, this model, with uh, pretty much as is, I, d I don't think I colored the plates in the other version of this model I did. Um, but uh, this model's up on the Google Drive, the same folder with the handouts and the prints and everything for this project. So if you want to see how it's modeled, you can go download that and then um, uh, look it over. So thanks for watching, and good luck modeling your gearbox, and I'll see you next time.